It is an ultimatum for voters. Approve millions of dollars in new taxes or your schools are going to close. Fox 6 investigator Brian Polson shows you the shrinking public school district where everything is on the line. Winter will soon be in the past, but in a pair of small Wisconsin villages, it is spring that will determine the future. It's a tough spot to be in, no question. The Palmyra Eagle Area School District is asking voters for $11.5 million over the next four years in a district with a budget just above $12 million. It's not an insignificant amount of money. And it's part of a soaring statewide trend. Since 2014, Wisconsin voters have approved more than $5.8 billion in new taxes through school referendums. 5.8 billion. That's more than President Trump sought from Congress for a border wall. I mean, those are staggering numbers. To Republican uh, State really Senator Dewey Strobel, the surge in referendums is a ticking debt bomb. To Democrat some Chris some Larson, it's else. the logical end result of deep cuts in state aid under a Republican administration. Schools are hard up for cash because it's been slashed at the state level. This spring, 60 Wisconsin school districts will seek another $1.2 billion on local ballots. There's uh, coffee and treats, please help yourself. But nowhere are the stakes higher. My husband and I are trying to retire. Than in Palmyra and Eagle. It seems sudden. Where the school district is giving voters an ultimatum. Pass this referendum or we file to dissolve. Correct. That's right. Unless voters agree to raise their own taxes substantially, the district is vowing to close its doors for good. They're kind of putting a gun to the head of the taxpayers. I just think closing an entire district would be detrimental to the community. Who wants to see their community schools close? Nobody does. Palmyra is in Jefferson County, Eagle in Waukesha County. Combined, they have fewer than 4,000 residents, a shared high school and middle school, two elementary schools, and not a single stoplight. All the kids know each other, the families know each other. Small towns with small schools. We're about half full right now, yep. That keep getting smaller every year. We can't stop teaching second grade because there's only 14 kids there. Scott Hoff is a school board member and father of four of the district's 769 remaining students. My wife and I grew up here. Okay. This is home, so it means a lot. While public school enrollment is declining statewide, in Palmyra Eagle, it is in a virtual free fall, down more than 35% since 2007. And Hoff says that is mostly due to open enrollment. People intentionally move here with no intention of coming to school here. We built our house here 19 years ago. Lisa Shulis yep. lives in Eagle, but sends her children to a neighboring district with a five-star state rating, bigger athletic programs, and better test scores. The opportunities that were available at McGuanago were just much more what we were looking for. She's not alone. 340 students who live here transfer out to other districts through open enrollment, while just 25 transfer in. A net loss of more than $2 million in state aid that may have the district on the brink of insolvency. We've reduced staffing, we've changed insurances, we've increased uh, deductibles, we've done all the big things that we can. We are down to a skeleton staff. There are no more cuts to be made. 18 other schools School districts have referendums on the ballot next month with a bigger total price tag, but Palmyra Eagles would have the second highest impact per taxpayer. By year four, the owner of a $100,000 home would pay an extra $305 per year. That's 19 times more than neighboring Kettle Moraine, where a $30 million referendum would only cost a similar homeowner an extra 16 bucks a year. I haven't seen another district of this size asking for this amount of money. If the referendum fails, there is no guarantee the schools will actually close. There's a whole array of what could happen. The district has already promised to operate next year, and the state could order them to remain open even after that. If we are told we have to operate, how do we pay people? From what? From where? Or the state could break up the district and divide it among the surrounding schools. I don't want to take the risk that this isn't here. The only thing certain right now is the rising tension. It's very hard to voice your opinion one way or another without feeling like you may be judged for it. The accusations, the name calling, 
So it's gotten personal. Oh, very much so, yeah. It's a fight for the district's very survival. It's my kid's future. It's hard to say, yes, I want to pay more taxes. It's the ultimate spot of democracy. And it all comes down to this. What is the value of having schools in your communities? And how much are you willing to pay for it? If the vote fails and the district does eventually dissolve, the tax impact for individual homeowners is not entirely clear. Some neighboring districts have lower tax rates, others have higher. And then there's the issue of long-term debt owed by Palmyra Eagle for additions done to the middle school and high school years ago. The state would have to determine who takes on that debt. Election day is April 2nd. In the newsroom, Brian Polson, Fox 6 Investigators. Brian, thank you.